Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as well as Shri Prabhupada. Welcome to devotees from Morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we uh, will be discussing from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. And the chapter is entitled, The Punishment and Reward of Kali. And we're happy to have His Holiness Chandamali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All grace to you and all grace to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is you. Thank you. Glory is Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Samba near Mala Dwava Lang Pandair Yona Padam Sharam Risha Rupena Kim Kastid Devunam Pari Ye Dayan Then he, Maharaj Pariksit, asked the bull. Oh, who are you? Are you a bull as white as the lotus flower? Or are you a demigod? You have lost three of your legs and are moving on only one. Are you some demigod causing us grief in the form of a bull? Purport. At least up to the time of Maharaj Pariksit, no one could imagine the wretched condition of the cool cow and the bull. Maharaj Pariksha, therefore, was astonished to see such a horrible scene. He inquired whether the bull was not a demigod, assuming such a wretched condition to indicate the future of the cow and the bull. Najatu karavendranam dordanda parirambite Utale nupata yasmin dinate prani nam suchaha. Now, for the first time in a kingdom well protected by the arms of the kings of the Kuru dynasty, I see you grieving with tears in your eyes. Up to now, no one on earth has ever shed tears because of royal neglect, negligence. Purport. Protection of the lives of both the human beings and the animals is the first and foremost duty of a government. A government must not discriminate in such principle. It is simply horrible for a pure-hearted soul to see organized animal killing by the state in this age of Kali. Maharaj Pariksit was lamenting for the tears in the eyes of the bull, and he was astonished to see such an unprecedented thing in his good kingdom. Men and animals were equally protected as far as life was concerned. That is the way in God's kingdom. Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste, Bhakti Devi Vedanta Swami Niti Charine. Nirvise Sayyavari Pashyakti Adai Charine. Manchikalpa to Visita. Sipa Sindhu Vedacha. Sipita Nam Bhavane Vyo. Sipa Vyo. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gada Har Siva Siddhi Gaur Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Kali Yuga has appeared, and here is the first sign. The mistreatment of living entities in the kingdom by unscrupulous persons. 
previously in kings king was king Yudhisthira was the previous king and there was no such thing if there was any misbehavior immediately it would be immediately removed from the kingdom and especially for animals that was not even heard of but here we see the advent and the age of Kali Maharaj Pariksit is bewildered in the way he asks his questions, thinking, how is it possible that a bull and a cow can be in such a wretched condition in his kingdom as he is the all-powerful, empowered personality to rule in a righteous way the kingdom? And never before has anything appeared in his kingdom. Now he is somewhat astonished. So he's asking these questions. Are you some demigod causing us grief in the form of a bull? So, therefore, in a godly kingdom, or a kingdom ruled by godly principles, <laughs> the uh, leaders would make sure, number one, it says here, the first and foremost duty of a king is to make sure that the citizens are protected. And progeny means all living entities, not just animals and men, but also trees and other living entities who live within the kingdom that they are not unnecessarily exploited or killed. <laughs> That's the first and foremost duty of a ruler because the citizens are like his children. And therefore he, he makes sure that the citizens have a right to live and have everything they need in order to live happily and make progress in life. But now we're seeing that uh, in such a condition is indicating that there is a change in atmosphere. Krishna has left the planet. <clears throat> and when Krishna was on the planet, peace, prosperity, religious principles, and true knowledge was available to everyone. But now Krishna has gone. As soon as Krishna left, Kali Yuga rushed in like a raging river and people became <clears throat> uh, greedy, lusty, making a living by false and deceptive means and no longer following their dharma or their vanashram. They were living whenever, whatever they could do, whatever they could to make um, material gains, they would do it, whether it was sinful or not. So these were indications of the beginning of Kali Yuga. And here we are now 5,100 and I don't know, somewhere between 5,100 and 5,200 years into Kali Yuga. <clears throat> And the age has become so bad that becomes a policy of the government to slaughter innocent children in the womb, to slaughter cows. And nobody considered it none. I mean, at least people in general do not consider it to be unusual. They accept this horrible arrangement for the destruction of the innocent lives of others as part of the economic and social environment in the world. Mm -hmm. And the leaders propagate such things. That's why we see that when a leader gets in government, if he makes it through his term of office, it's very rare. And if he finishes his term of office, he never becomes reelected again because it says that the leaders in society take on one sixth of the karma of the people. 
So if the people are sinful, they get one sixth of that. The people are pious, they get one sixth of that. So whatever is the karmic calculation within the society, <clears throat> the leaders are responsible, and therefore they get a reaction, either good or bad, based on that. So we see now <clears throat> that the leaders are so misleading, they can't lead anyone. And life <clears throat> in the world is very cheap. People are dying like crazy. It's like there is a recent, very recent statistics that um, the third leading cause of death in the United States, and this is documented by the Food and Drug Administration, the third leading cause of death in the United States is the treatment that people get when they go for medical care. So they, uh, people get sick, they go to the doctor and the doctor kills them. This is a statistic, it is a fact, and it's not only said, but it's said by the mainstream news media that this is actually happening. But nobody bats an eye and nothing changes and things go on. 15,000 people every month die because of mistreatment by the doctors. So we live in a very deficient, and very decadent, and very degraded and very cruel society. And therefore, uh, the only solution is Krishna consciousness. There's no solution. Here we're seeing that uh, uh, the cow, the cow is actually God's gift. The cow and the bull is God's gift to human society for prosperity, for livelihood, for spiritual practice. The cow is such an, a beneficial animal for human society that it mentions that uh, the killing of a cow is equal, this is in the Samhita. the killing of a cow is equal to the killing of two humans. It's more grievous, according to scripture, to kill a cow than it is to kill a human being, unnecessarily. That's how important cows are. And it's also mentioned that of all of the types of persons that require protection by the society, such as it's mentioned in one verse that are five categories of people, women, children, old people, Brahmins, priestly class, and cows. And out of the five, the two most important were the greatest of all sins come those who neglect to protect or exploit such persons, they, uh, is the cows and the Brahmins. And out of the two, the cows are considered to be the most important. Because human society depends on cow culture and cow protection. And what we have today is the opposite. Not only are they not protected and cared for, they're seen as an economic commodity to be killed and being uh, distributed in that way and for a small group of money, people to make some economic gain from this. So we're living in a, a Rakshasha society, a society of animals who go on in the name of human beings, actually they're lower than animals, even long. animals don't do this to other animals in most cases. But So this is uh, the present situation. So therefore, in our preaching of Krishna consciousness, we, we, we emphasize how important it is to take care of cows, to take care of the priestly class, women, children, old people, and give them everything they need in order to live happily and make progress towards the goal of life. 
And that is our propaganda in Krishna consciousness. We preach that you know, that the leaders in society must be responsible for the livelihood of the people that they, and rather they are exploiters. So this is Kali Yuga. And it's not only in one place, it's all over the world, practically. <clears throat> and so they will, there, therefore there was constant cataclysms produced by material nature in the form of devastations, tornadoes, uh, rising oceans, <laughs> droughts, forest fires, famine. These are all due to the sinful activity of the general population. And Mother Earth is the provider for the living entities. And if people do not perform pious activities, then, then she withholds her bounty. Nanbhavanti bhutani parjanya anasambhavan. That when uh, there is sacrifice performed, there's sufficient rain. And then when there's rain, there's grains and crops grow. And people have everything they need. But you see many places in the world, there's, they've simply turned into deserts. Nothing grows there. And people cannot get anything from these environments. There's simply a scourge upon the earth. And so Mother Nature, she is God's instrument for providing for the living entities. And she's also God's agent for punishing the living entities when they act in a sinful way. So that's why you see there's so many natural disasters coming and also wars, pestilence, you know, viruses, these are all due to sinful activities of the population. So the only solution is to practice and to preach God consciousness as the solution to all problems because in Krishna consciousness, God consciousness, there is a social a um, uh, social program for living according to the, the laws of God. Not thus we just simply worship in our temples and we live any way we want. No, there is a way to live that is conducive to the worship of the Supreme Lord and based on practical human needs and human and cultures. In other words, People have to live according to moral and religious principles and not just say, well, I'm a religious person. I can do anything I want. And therefore, I give my donation to the temples. And I, I sometimes I worship. And this is not religion. This is some kind of uh, some kind of ornamentation to to impress people that you have some kind of piety, but actually it has no meaning. It's simply degraded. <laughs> so this, so there is so much anomalies and irreligion in the world today, and it goes on, and people consider it to be okay, or if they don't, they can't understand how to make solutions to the problem. But we have the solution and that is given by God himself. That, that the living entity is an eternal associate of the Supreme Personality of God and is meant to worship the Lord and live according to religious principles. When that spreads throughout society, then the earth becomes favorable and she provides everything they need. But that can only be done when there is righteous or kingly rule that is actually guided by religious principle. As long as we have the present type of ruling, and that is exploitation of the citizenry and making wars every once in a while to increase economic gains, and then it's a demonic society and it's run by demons and rakshasas who are simply exploiting 
the world and exploiting the earth and exploiting uh, themselves too, because ultimately they suffer also. So, um, yeah. So this for Prabhupada said, we have to develop our farms and de developing our farm communities. We can keep cows and have nice foodstuffs, grow our own food, live simply and depend on nature. Nature provides everything that the living entity needs when one works according to the law, the laws of God. And so there is a ideal lifestyle that comes along with a practice of spirituality. And that lifestyle is intrinsic or inseparable from worship of the Supreme Lord. And that is to live simply according to God's arrangement and uh, uh, protect cows, keep cows, not so much protecting cows, but care for cows grow your own food, live simply, and uh, do not depend on this rakshasha society in order to get the foodstuffs that you need to live, which are always in shortage and becoming more and more expensive as time goes on. Yeah, so um, God has arranged for the living entities to live an ideal life based on spiritual principles and moral and moral activities. Okay, taking care of cows, taking care of children, making sure the women have everything they need to uh, live nicely, taking care of old people. As they get old, they cannot longer produce anymore, but still they should be given a section within the society where they can live their life out <laughs> and practice spiritual life and at least give them some human arrangements. Now we have we have these old age homes where they the children don't want to take care of the parents. The parents are a burden. They send them to these old age homes and they sit there and they waste their life and then just rotting away, you know, talking nonsense or playing some useless games or watching television until they die. It's just uh, a very pitiable uh, society because it's run by demons. Actually, it is. And that is that's already documented. <laughs> so the only solution is to spread the Sankirtan movement and bring people back to the to the principles of spirituality and proper living according to God's arrangement. That will be done by two things, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world through the propagation of Harinam Sankirtan, and teaching people through scriptural evidence and scriptural knowledge how to worship God and how to live properly, and also creating an environment where people can live without having to spend all of their time working so hard just to get a few, a little bit of money so they can buy a few things that they need and live in these, uh, these big gigantic houses that they're not even there most of the time anyway, and most of the time going to work and the house sits there they come for a few hours in the evening and that's it. <laughs> and then they have to pay big money in order to keep the house up and buy the house. And it's just so our whole society is dysfunctional <laughs> completely, all from top to bottom. It's because it is based on the wrong foundation. If you don't have a, the proper foundation, if you establish the raw, wrong foundation or the wrong center, then everything you do from there is wrong. Just like if you're doing a mathematical equation and you start off with basic arithmetic and you do two plus two is five or two plus two is three, then uh, all of the calculations you do after that are all wrong. 
And the more you do the calculations, the farther off you get from the actual, you know, proper answer. So in the same way, the foundation of the present world civilization is wrong. It's off. It's based on sense gratification and economic development. People go to work to get money so they can enjoy sense gratification. People go to school to get some education so they can they feel like they can get some job and then make some money and enjoy sense gratification. This is all artificial, real livelihood is Vedic culture, live simple living and Krishna conscious practice. Both are required, but one who is Krishna conscious will automatically not exploit others because they have developed spiritual qualities. Okay, so we can stop there. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Marge, for such a wonderful class. I'm going to stop sharing the screen, and I request devotees if you can um, turn your videos on. Just uh, reminding devotees from Tuesday's class how Marad said that if we see each other, we become happy. So we could. Uh, <laughs> I should remember that, Maharaj. <laughs> that's. The, I think that's one way that I can have them turn the videos on, Maharaj. <laughs> I think you just repeated me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Just trying to use your words to inspire others, Marge. Um, would like to ask you, what is any questions, any comments, any clarification? You know, please do raise your hand, and I'll call upon you, or you can, uh, you know, put it in the chat, and I'll be happy to read your question. Marge, in the last, um, uh, in the verse eight, you know, Shri Prabhupada was saying that the protection of the lives of both the human beings and the animals is the first and foremost duty of a government. And we know that we don't live in a pucker, in a really, you know, in a in the right, righteous gut in a righteous government. So in communities, Maharaj, in devotional, in devotee communities, in temple communities, how can we uh, adopt that or develop that mood of being each other's uh brothers and sisters keepers like you know we provide that protection for one another when we, when we understand that we're all intimately connected with each other they say each person has what we say influence whatever you do influences others whether it's pious impious or somewhere in between everyone has influence so we should use our influence in a way that is beneficial both for ourselves and for others. So it is, it, we have to understand that another person's welfare is also connected to our own welfare. So when we are serving others, actually we're serving ourselves. And we're creating a type of environment where people understand what is human culture, which means to work for the benefit of not only God, but to work for the benefit of others. It's simultaneous. So community is the foundation by which everything, all the things that we need in our life to uh, live, both uh, in our material needs and in our spiritual practice is there within community. So community means sharing. It means caring. It means <clears throat> uh, uh, understanding and moving forward towards the goal of life, which is Krishna consciousness. We have the knowledge. We just have to put it in practice. And the best way for or the most ideal way and the most recommended way is community. And temples are like small communities. So we, when we go to a temple, we are entering into a little community of a number of devotees who are working together to, to worship the Lord in that particular temple and everything that they need in terms of their personal needs, along with the spiritual practices 
is there in that little microcosm. And we can also take that one step farther and make it into a, a living community or like a rural community where people not only worship there, but at the same time, they also live in that same environment. That's Prabhupada's goal. Of course, we're, we do that in the microcosm with temples, but we still depend too much on the external environment for our needs. And therefore, sometimes we have to compromise our principles in order to uh, get what we need. Compromising our principles means that sometimes we we have to cut short our uh, our spiritual practice in order to get our material needs. But when material needs are also part of the community, then everything actually is an act of spirituality. It's not something separate. So in a temple, uh, it's meant to be uh, uh, inclusive. And everything that those members of the temple are there, they're they're working together as as a unit. And you have your temple leaders who are keeping who are directing everything, giving the vision on how to move forward and making sure everything is going on accordingly, according to plan. That's practical. Thank you, Marge. I have a follow-up question, but I'll ask after because there's a question in the chat. And this is from Mother Janava. She said, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, can we focus on Krishna knowing that it is Kali Yuga? And the second part is, I mean, if we focus on Krishna, we can go beyond material energy of Kali Yuga and go back to Krishna. Yeah, that's, that's the... But what does it take to focus on Krishna? completely. It's like Prabhupada said in 1974, he had completely dismissed the idea of Van Ashram prior to that. But then in 1974, Prabhupada switched and said, now we have to develop this Saibi Van Ashram. And he said, if chanting Hare Krishna is so easy, why are devotees falling down? Chanting Hare Krishna is so easy. Why are we not fixed in our Krishna consciousness? Because our so our social and economic needs you know, are are somewhat becoming a divergent, and at the same time, an obstacle in the practice of our spiritual life. So by amalgamating both of our so our material needs in a lifestyle that is both uh, providing everything and at the same time supportive of our Krishna consciousness. Therefore, community is needed. You can do a rural community, you can do an urban community, but community is needed. Yeah, you can stay you can stay in your little apartment and worship your deity and chant Hare Krishna like that. But how much support are you going to get? How much we get our happiness in Krishna consciousness when we're with other devotees. That's when we become happy. When we're when we're working, sharing Krishna consciousness and serving together, there's where the happiness is. There is some happiness in our little bhajans in our house. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> and it's okay. And it's kind of considered to be, a, you know, um, what we what we do, but if you really want to experience the happiness of devotional service, it is being around other devotees and serving and um, worshiping together and sharing Krishna consciousness. And that's that's our movement. So we do that in temples. So we recommend live in the temple. If you're living outside the temple, then you should be married. If you're not if you're not if you're not if you're not married, why would you live outside of the temple? It doesn't make sense. 
Because you, you know, if you're not married, why would you live outside of the temple? Find a temple, find a community to connect with and, you know, live in that environment. What's the use of, of working for the non-devotees when there is no economic need? And even if you're married and you have no children, what is the use of living outside? Live in the environment of devotees. That's what our, our movement is about. If you have children, okay, then you then there's some responsibility. But then Prabhupada also said, move into our communities and send your children to Gurukul, educate them there, and also establish higher education within our society. So we don't haven't done that completely. At least it's being done in certain places but it's not being done completely. And so we still are very much dependent on the secular society for everything we need. And therefore we're marginalized in our spiritual practice. And we're always, you know, pushed like a leaf in the wind according to the economic situation in the world. We have to struggle. I'm just giving a vision for something that Prabhupada has been, uh, been saying for a long, a long time, from the year 1974, all the way up to the time he left in 77. But yeah, you can live outside. You can chant Hare Krishna. You can live in your house like that. And you can make spiritual progress. Then you still have to deal with the material energy. in a very direct way. <laughs> and we become dependent on that. The food is polluted. Food is full of chemicals. The air is bad. The cities are full of crime. The water is being polluted also. People are getting sick simply by eating. It's a fact that... <laughs> Hospitals are over flooded with people who are getting sick all, every, all the time. People are always getting sick. And Prabhupada explains, people get sick because they live in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an environment that is contrary to human well-being. They live in that. Pollution, so bad, really bad. You don't even know what to eat anymore. You go into the bathroom, they got these little plastic bottles of liquid soap now. And they're all full of chemicals. You're putting all those chemicals on your hands and other parts of your body. And you wonder later on, you get some skin disease or some rash or something. Everything is polluted, the whole society. But there is a there is a movement outside of our movement to go back to a more simplified lifestyle. Unfortunately, they don't have the spiritual center. We have the spiritual center, which is the glue by which everything moves and keeps everyone together. Without that spiritual center, then there is there is reasons for disagreement. There's reasons for uh, for breaking up. <laughs> But, yeah. So develop community, either urban or rural, either one. Even urban communities, at least, you get a lot of support from other devotees. You might say the urban communities are, are our temples now, but there are devotees who live in, in the world who all live together in one area. And they said they they visit each other's apartments and they have programs together. Um, the kids are they they associate with each other. Yeah. So there's an attempt, uh, which is not ideal, but it's it works to a certain degree, 
the whole idea is association and support based on that association. Our society has doctors, we have lawyers, we have mechanics, we have um, you know, people who do, do accounting, people who are expert in cooking, people who are expert in different fields of medicine. We have so many. If we were to put it all together, we can create a, a very powerful spiritual community that wouldn't have to depend so much, but we're all doing our own little thing separately and we come together on Sunday or once a week and we go to a program and we sit and we, which is good and it's recommended, it's, it's good we have at least in this situation, but still, it's not ideal. And it can be ideal if we actually move in a more community type environment. Thank you, Marge. Janova did say um, that, I'm going to get back to her chat. And she says, thank you, true indeed, we need devotees. And she said, I'd like to stay in the temple. So that was her inspiration from your answer, Marge. Thank you so much. Ileana, yeah. you can go with your question, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, please accept my obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Gurudeva. All glories to Devot. Um, Kali Yuga is very strange. <laughs> That's a very strange uh, period. And uh, yesterday I stay in uh, in my home. I I have a um, difficult period, and um, when uh, I I I stay bad, I stay not uh, good uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, I do um, a little mistake, not a big mistake, but I do a mistake. And in that moment, uh, I I feel a presence. I I see uh, my um, the the my deities. <laughs> but uh, in this moment, uh, in uh, in the place uh, when put the deities, not deities, and uh, there is a um, um, stick to Lord Jagannath. Lord, I, Lord Jagannath see me, Ilenia. <laughs> and I, no, I, I don't see Lord Jagannath. And my mind, no, it, this is good. Because you do this little mistake. You don't uh, do a big mistake, but is not true, but it's not true because Lord Jagannath uh, uh, communicates to me. And uh, uh, in that moment, I bro broke, um, I don't do the other mistake, okay? And uh, I chanting, um, Jaya Jagannath. Jai Jagannath, Jai Baladeva, Jai Subhadra. And in that moment, it's uh, all okay. Because it, the, the sense of my... Yeah, when you come to London, you'll see Jagannath again. Big size. <laughs> thank sorry thank you very much <laughs> okay we can't wait till you get here you you coming on saturday uh friday friday tomorrow, tomorrow. yes tomorrow. i want to see you for all my heart <laughs> okay there he is, Jagannath, here go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
These are the same deities you'll see in the Rath Yatra on Sunday, in Jagannath Baladev Subhadra from Wow. Whole street. This, this is my stick. My question to you, which I keep asking you, and you do not answer my question, is do you have a ride from the airport? Yes, I, I arrive and uh, take uh, the bus. Why, why yeah. take the bus? I can arrange for someone to pick you up. I don't know, but um, it's not a problem. Uh, Stansted Airport. The Bhaktivedanta Manor is one hour by car. It's not okay. It's a it's a long way. Ah, it's not a problem for me. I I am uh, I chanting a lot of japa. All right. <laughs> but if you need a ride, you just call me and I'll send someone to pick you up and take you to the manor. Okay. Thank you very much. Kabadasta. <laughs> Those of you who know Italian, you understand what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all my heart, uh, devote, uh, because uh, I stay here is for the, the grace of the devote. Is only the, the grace of the devote. Yeah. So when you get to Bhakti Vedanta Manor, one of my disciples, her name is Kalakanti. Mm -hmm. Kalakanti is expecting you. And she'll take care of you along with Vitya Priya. Or Jagat, Jagat Priya. Jagat Priya, okay. And Kalakanti also. So. Kalakanti. Yeah, she lives in the ashram. Too. Okay. But you can take the train too instead of the bus. The train is faster. The train is the, okay. Yeah. It's better. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hallelujah. Thank you, Elena, for saying that. <laughs> Such a sweet uh, testimony. Thank you, Eliana. Really enjoyed that beautiful testimony. Any um, questions from devotees, if you would like to ask? I'm sure many of us got swept away by the beautiful testimony by Eliana that we may have lost our environment of where we are at. <laughs> and we got transported to a different realm. At least I felt that way. Such a beautiful exchange. So um, any devotees had, have, have any questions? Um, let me see. There's something that just came through by Bhakta Brad. Okay. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All Gosha Shura Prapa. Thank you for the class, Maharaj. In relation to the discrimination of souls, whether it be tree, animal, devotee, etc. How can we realize that sometimes our own personal subconscious preferences are an impersonal attachment to how we want to see Krishna and is ignorance rather than authentic compassion with recognition? Just follow the prescribed method. There is a way to approach the Supreme Personality of God. And it's given by the Guru, it's given by the the scriptures. We chant the holy names of the Lord. We connect with Krishna through the holy name. We can see, come go to the temple and take darshan of his deity form and offer prayers. We can associate with devotees and engage in practical devotional activity. These are all ways to approach the Supreme Lord. We don't have to invent anything new. We can take Krishna Prashadam, knowing that it is the mercy of the Lord coming in, in, in the form of foodstuffs. 
we can read the scriptures and learn all about our relationship with Krishna, and we can also learn about Krishna, who he is, and how he performs his activities, both in the spiritual world and in the material world. So the process for knowing and approaching Krishna, we don't have to have this subconscious uh, um, you know, idea of how it should be done. Just push all that aside and just go for the recommended means. It's all there. Mm -hmm. And the most important and the most uh, beneficial is to associate with devotees and uh, share Krishna consciousness activities together. I make this point over and over again because devotees don't get enough association. And that's one of the problems. We don't see that as the problem. The more association you have, the more you'll become uh, fixed in your spiritual practice. Thank you, Marge. And I hope that helped uh, Bhakta Brett uh, answer your question. There's a question in the chat, and now I'll come to Sri Devi. Um, Marge uh, sort of is asking <clears throat> if someone can share the contact of the devotee who is taking care of the registration for your retreat at GEV. Yeah, her name is Dimple. Uh, I think, uh, Sri Devi, you have Dimple's. Uh, Email? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, I have Dimple's number and uh, I can send that information to uh, Anasuya to distribute. Yeah, is it yes. Okay, yeah okay. that's fine because uh, um, he's I'll also send you the retreat email. Both those things I'll send. That would be great. And, I, and I'll share it with us with um, Sorum. Okay. Yes, perfect. I just, I just received the retreat email today along with a video that highlights the activities that we had performed in previous retreats. It's quite nicely done. It was today, if you look on, you'll see it also, Sri Devi, if you look on your email. Uh, yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj, I received it and I saw it. I'll forward that to Anasuya. Yeah, everything's there. It also talks about the registration too. The registration closes August 4th. So there's not much time left. Oh, glad sort of asked me about that this morning. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I I think um um he's gonna be in, in India at, at around that time. So that's what he wanted to inquire to 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 be part of the retreat. So yeah, but we have to register because they have a limited amount of space that is available. And therefore, when they register, you're guaranteed to get a place to stay. Will do, Maharaj. I, I'm, and when, as soon as you send it to me, Sri Devi, whenever, I will send it over to Soro. And you can ask your question, Sri, Sri Devi, since you have your hand up, Prabhu. <laughs> Thank you, Ansuya. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, I'm um, meditating a little bit on, you know, developing a small uh little maybe community maybe a little group of people like-minded people coming together living on off the land keeping cows growing whatever we can and so on so is my understanding correct that Srila Prabhupada actually wanted us to have our own economy have our own coins have our own currency barter goods like I grow potatoes you grow tomatoes and then we share and so there's less and less dependence on the outside world and the outside economy. And therefore, we don't need even so much money. Am I correct in that assumption that if we really follow Prabhupada's instructions, we will not be hankering after money so much? He said it's perfectly correct. But he did say, it's kind of interesting that he said that, um, we should, uh, in Navadvip, the place where we have our temple, we should uh, we should create our own little country there and then withdraw from India and, and uh, create our own currency. And he called the, the currency called Chaitanya, as he called them. 
That will be our currency. I don't say time yes. <laughs> How about had a big vision for complete overhauling of our the whole lifestyle and back to a lifestyle which is conducive to human welfare, human progress, and spiritual uh, perfection. Prabhupada never thought small. And he understood that this present civilization, he said it's a demoniac civilization, it's destroying all the good qualities of the living entities. So we don't, he said, we don't, we want to withdraw from this whole civilization and create the ideal civilization and then attract people from this, this decrepit civilization who are looking for a better way of life. It's like a transformation of the whole world culture towards Krishna consciousness or towards God consciousness. Yeah. So everything you said is, yeah, he's perfectly in line with Srila Prabhupada's vision. Thank you, Sri Devi. It's, Any, being done, pardon, pardon, it's pardon. being done in piecemeal in certain places around the world. And there are also some communities that are really moving forward and, and in a real success, successful way in bringing all of these about. But we have a lot to go as a society yet. Thank you, Maharaj. Any questions from yeah. devotees? Anything uh, you could, you know, put in the chat, or I can, uh, you can raise your hand. Maharaj, I have a question, and uh, in the early part of your class, and that made me think because I've heard that from a few other devotees. You said that um, you mentioned in your lecture that um, a leader who runs the country or rules the country, um, based on how he rules the country, one sixth of the karma is um, falls on the leader. So that got me started thinking, and I have heard in ISKCON that as a leader of ISKCON, a temple president, we pick up some karma, Maharaj. So I'm just wondering, how much karma am I picking up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I had to ask that question. <laughs> well, you're probably getting a lot of good karma. <laughs> Because I've heard that, you know, and, and also if we recommend somebody for initiation, we do get some karma. So I'm thinking, okay, what's the percentage here? Don't worry, your 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 spiritual jati is overshadowing all of the inebrities that come by way of making decisions. <laughs> I hope, Maharaj, please pray for me. <laughs> I just had to Thank ask you. that question. I, I, I saw you had the, the Rathiyatra. We just recently had a Rathiyatra in Harrisburg. It was just it was about three weeks ago. Yes, Mars, three weeks ago. Yeah, it was great. I think that was one of the, the biggest one you had so far, wasn't it? Yes, Mars. Uh, after COVID, <clears throat> we always have it every year, but we, we, we couldn't do it during COVID. So we, we started back up in our. Uh, Geez, I think last year was when we started back up after the COVID ended and then followed by this year. Yeah, so it's our 13th time, 13th annual. Yeah, but the attendance was... Yes. Yes. Yeah, the attendance was very good. And you attracted people from all around the area, not just from Harrisburg. Yes, Marge, we, we do get devotees that come out um, from the tri-state area on the East Coast, you know, as far as uh, New, New York. Sometimes uh, uh, we got a lot of youth this time, which was very, very nice. Yeah, I think your next step is to start bringing, start doing some programs during the week for people, like educational programs or kirtan programs. Mm -hmm. you know, make that temple more a place where people come 
for different types of spiritual activity? We just started uh, something called Bhakti Lounge March on Wednesday evenings at the temple, which Prichit is actually take, um, handling that. And, and it's for uh, newcomers, spiritual seekers, those who have, you know, want to learn more, those who may already be in it. And uh, we call it Bhakti Lounge. It's, it's every Wednesday. They start off with, you know, light prasadam with Arati Kirtan and then follows by an hour and 15 minutes discussion on the science of self revelation. But that's been going pretty good. So it's every Wednesday evenings. Yeah. Like a midweek dose. <laughs> and do something on Friday night too. Yes, that's the, you know, that's a good one. Yeah, Friday night. You know, we should think of something that way we can get the devotees more involved and on track. Yes. The idea is just bring the devotees together more and more. More and more spiritual activities. Yes, March. And this will also attract new people too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marge. Pray that, uh, please pray for me, Marge, that I can somehow not, can somehow take the load of the karma. <laughs> <laughs> when you mentioned that, I, I had to ask that question. <laughs> Cause I, know I, heard. I know what you're talking about. It's, we're in the same group. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Marge. And 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 especially I've also heard and told, and I've also been told that you know when a temple president recommends someone for initiation, they have to be very careful, uh, you know, and train that person up because something goes wrong, then it falls on the leader and the spiritual master, both the one who is giving the initiation and the one who's recommending. I'm like, oh oh okay. Yeah yeah. And there should be a training program that encompasses an, an all around uh, all around aspect of what it means to become a disciple. Mm. What are the duties of a disciple? What is the consciousness of a disciple? All of that should be there. Thank you, Marge. Can we do a round, a couple of rounds of Jaffa or something? Yes, much. I was about to just actually say, would you like to end with rounds with, with Jaffa? Yes. Yeah, I'll be doing two rounds. So that's fine, March. If you want to do more, you can do more. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Shiva Prabhupada, Ki Jai Shri Mad Bhagavatam, Ki Thank you, March. <laughs>